Hey guys, on the road today, normally I wouldn't be broadcasting, but still a lot of stuff happening with Artemis and with NASA. Some confusion also as to what really is going on. What's happening with the rocket? What sort of damage did it take during the hurricane? How serious is it? Are they able to fix it? And if not, what sort of threats does this minor damage represent to the future? And also, did they really find everything? Lots of questions, gonna get you some answers right now. Hello, YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut, and this is... I'll keep this brief, 89,385 subscribers, 615 to go to get to 90,000 and then 10,000 after that. You know what to do. Let's get on with SLS. So what are the circumstances as far as the storm was concerned, any potential damage, that sort of thing? Well, the quick and short answer is we don't know and neither does NASA. Not really. They have a brief rundown of a variety of things that took place, but when it comes right down to it, we can't be absolutely certain as to what happened. Had they been given it to do all over again, they would have stayed in the VAB rather than brave the storm, but they didn't have the opportunity to return to safety. So here's a quick rundown on a variety of things that happened during the hurricane. Now, during their most recent press conference, NASA repeatedly assured everybody that their rocket was rated for the winds that it experienced. As a matter of fact, the winds never approached 75% of the recommended levels. However, that being the case, the winds from Hurricane Nicole caused a thin strip of caulk-like material known as RTV to delaminate and pull away from the base of the Orion crew capsule's protective nose cone at the top of the rocket located right about here. The material is used to fill in a slight indentation where the fairing attaches to the capsule, minimizing aerodynamic heating during ascent. The fairing fits over the Orion capsule and is jettisoned once the rocket is out of the lower atmosphere. According to mission manager Mike Serafin, quote, it was an area about 10 feet in length on the windward side where the storm blew through. It is a very, very thin layer of RTV. It's about 0.2 inches or less in thickness. And of course, here's the problem. This cannot be repaired on the pad. They would have to take the vehicle back once again to the VAB, which they're not going to do. Instead, they need to develop what's called a flight rationale. That is to say, a justification for flying in spite of the delaminated RTV. Now, most probably, this minor issue is not going to significantly interfere with SLS's flight. Nevertheless, this stuff is there for for a reason and it being gone is not a good thing but it may be a very minor thing but it's not the only problem either there was also water in the crew access arm but that's something that they are able to take care of there was also an electrical failure in the hydrogen tail mast that is to say the umbilicals at the base of the rocket that provide hydrogen fuel more potential for leaks, but they're able to at least fix that or replace it with backup equipment. The most significant issue was the fact that the Orion umbilical came off its tray and engineers and technicians had to put it back in its tray while dangling about 100 meters off the pad. Now that would be a terrifying experience, something that I would have a real hard time doing, so props to those guys for doing that. In any event, it appears that the vast majority of the issues have been rectified. It's really only that small piece of material that is a bit of an issue, although it does seem that it's going to be relatively minor. But here's another problem. They really can't tell, that is to say NASA cannot identify any other issues that might exist inside the rocket. What we do know is that the rocket moved slightly during the windstorm, there's no way really to avoid that. It's kind of like a skyscraper. It sways in the wind, especially strong winds. 
and we don't know what sort of impact that may have had on the rocket, or more importantly, the mobile launch tower. Even though the rocket is definitely rated for those kinds of winds, I have absolutely zero confidence that the mobile launch tower is rated for anything in particular. As I've mentioned many times before, the three different contractors who were involved in putting together this cobbled together pile of garbage didn't communicate with one another, did not provide a master plan, and so how can you really tell what sort of winds it's rated to handle? That is a big unknown factor as we approach launch in the very early morning of November 16th. And how much has happened in the months that have elapsed in this since this thing was supposed to take flight in late August. It has been a very difficult, very crooked, and very frustrating path. But if it does indeed fly, it will undoubtedly be the most spectacular thing to be seen in Florida's night sky in over 50 years. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, check my description for various ways to keep this content coming, and as always, stay angry about space!